So the law and neuroscience project is important because we're learning just a tremendous number of new things about how the brain operates. Um, up till the modern era, we've been inferring this from behaviors, and now we get a chance to actually observe some of the workings of the brain as it's working. Um, the reason that this is so significant at this point in time is because the legal system is starting to be faced with questions about, well, how does this particular structure in someone's brain affect our ability to uh, determine their responsibility for their behavior. So uh, we are faced with technologies that uh, are, are new and challenging and they're being introduced into the court system already and we're being tasked to figure out how best to incorporate them, uh, how to distinguish the good technologies from the bad, the good interpretations from the bad, um, and that sort of thing. So we hope that out of the Law and Neuroscience project in three to five years will come the foundation for a deeper understanding about how the legal and scientific communities can work together, not only in understanding each other's goals and methods, but also in the particular context of criminal justice. How can we do more effectively and more efficiently the things that society assigns to the criminal justice system? That may involve such things as identifying the blameworthy and perhaps providing uh, more sophisticated treatments for those individuals that need it um, and having a deeper understanding about how people go about making decisions about who should be punished and how much. Um, among our other goals include such things as um, trying to investigate whether or not there are ways that we might reduce the size of the prison population, ways in which we might identify the culpable, the guilty, more effectively and efficiently. Uh, along the way, we also hope to educate the public about things we will find and, uh, and conclude and offer consensus statements on about how to draw the distinction between uh, effective use of neuroscience in the courtroom and in legal proceedings and the ineffective or inaccurate or unreliable evidence that might be introduced. Um, surely the neuroscience here is not magic. It doesn't enable us to read minds, but we hope within that limitation to understand the context in which it might be used effectively and no further. So we hope to help legal uh, actors, judges, jurors, legislators have a more developed sense of where the promise is in the technology and also where the limits are.